She's back at Stanford, but not back to real work or school just yet. Helping us to break down the critical moments from these World Chess Championship games is, of course, Women's Fide Master Alexandra Botez again. And Alexandra, on that note, this critical moment, move 18 from today's game, had everybody wondering what's going to happen with the pawns. How are they going to be traded? How are the players going to handle this tension? And I'm going to turn it over to you and let you tell everybody what they can learn from what Magnus Carlsen did here. So this game is very instructive for beginner and intermediate players because usually first instinct is to try to alleviate the tension and go for the trades as soon as you see them. So in this position, E takes F5 or C takes D3. But instead, Magnus taught us that he can continue to keep the tension and try to fight for a win even in a position that looks drawish. He continued by playing C3 after B takes C3, he surprised us again by not taking back right away. Instead, he played the bold move D5, so trying to build more tension on the board, trying to play exciting chess. After Bishop G5, it was kind of clear that it would be very difficult to push a win here. Nevertheless, as the game went on, he was able to get a pass pawn on the E file, so he was able to get plenty of compensation for his otherwise sacrificed pawn. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to win this time, but it was still instructive on how we can continue to create tension in an otherwise drosh looking game. Yeah, great breakdown. And I think it is very hard, especially for inexperienced players, to look at a trade in the face and not blink and just let it build. But let's go back to this moment, because as you mm -hmm. said, without this building on the tension, creating even more of it, the possible tactics that occurred in this game would have never happened. The key point, everybody, is that C takes D4 was not possible because this check is now a fork. Uh, and even taking on d5 would be ill-advised because now black could take f5 and either white would have to retreat, probably losing all of these pawns in the process, or fail prey to another tactical possibility where black can clear the smoke and just like that there's a double attack of the bishop hanging and the move bishop to d4 check coming. So as you said, he was not able to win, but it does show that building on tension, creating those opportunities for your opponent to go wrong is the first step toward winning a lot of these games and something strong players do all the time that we can learn from. Thank you, Alexandra. You will not be with us for the final game. You'll be back to work there at Stanford, but everybody make sure you're with us for the critical moment breakdown after game 12.